back. Wow, Julie Green, Emmanuel Johnson, what a, a, a great privilege we had to go out, be with the Lord, and pray. Oh, yeah. Isn't that amazing? Oh, my. It was awesome. My, you know, each time it's, it's just a new experience. Mm -hmm. The hunger that people have is just a new experience to meet God's people, uh, to see. Uh, uh, you know, speaking in the cameras are one thing, but when you're actually hands on, it's another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's another. Seeing God uh, do things for people, the words he's giving them, how it's touching them, how it's breaking bondages, how it's healing them. It really is truly amazing to be able to be used by God as a vessel in that way to touch the people in this hour. Because there are, like, like you said, there are people who are so hungry right now. They're not coming here just to hear a truth. They're really coming here to have it change their life. Oh, yeah. They're really coming here to be touched by God. Yep. I don't know about you two. I'm sure you're just like me. I, I, I get more joy out of praying. Yeah. The feedback I get for praying on them than they probably get from me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an encouragement. It's, amazing. it's encouraging. Yeah. It's yep. encouraging. Yeah. And, and you know, we get to see Lord. The Lord's using all of us as vessels. Well, you get to see the power of God. Yeah. You know, because we're praying and we're releasing the love of God, and mm -hmm. we're believing with them for their miracle, for their breakthrough. Yeah. And many of them are receiving it right then and there. They're receiving it. Yeah. And, and these people have driven, and many of them flew, mm -hmm. you know, miles just to be at this great event. And, yeah. and you know, and their lives are changed. Mm -hmm. they They're are. transformed. We have prayed for people everywhere. I mean, we couldn't go to the restaurant. We couldn't go down a hall. Mm, yes. We couldn't go and backstage. No matter where we were, God had just put somebody in our path to pray for them. I mean, it took us forever to get here because yes, it, did. it was just like, it, he just kept bringing more and more people and it was just, it was awesome to see when you are praying for somebody and God gives them a word and they're just like, how did you know that? I'm like, well, because God does and he knows what you need to hear. You know? So it's awesome. It's, all it's about powerful. Him. It is all about him yeah. and, and yeah. his glory. His glory. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, yeah. And, and go ahead, Dave. No, go ahead. Dave, these are not, and these are not accidents. These are divine appointments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because there were some testimonies that, you know, we didn't know we were going to ever get a chance to, to get prayer or see you, Julie, or me, whatever. And it's like, here, you're right here, right there in the lobby. Are you right here? It's, they totally didn't expect it. And they were praying for them. And, you know, and you, and you just like the way God is orchestrating all of this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, and our lives are being changed. Oh, yeah. You know, definitely. Our lives are being changed. Mm -hmm. Because we, we, we just see those that are out there and it's just a hunger. And, and I want to continue to encourage the saints that, I mean, change is, is I know people say we're waiting to see change. Change is already happening. Yeah. It's already happening. Yep. It's it is. It's, it's there. And, and I live in California. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, because I live in California, I, I, it, it, and when I leave California, and then change is coming to California, but we, we're seeing it. It is hitting. It's hitting. But I have to be honest. <laughs> you know, it seemed like, no, and the minute I leave California, you go to any event, the hunger just intensifies. Mm -hmm. yeah. It just intensifies. Every one of these events, it intensifies from the last one. It mm -hmm. does. And this one's something different. I, I woke up this morning, and I just felt the power of God on me before I even, you know, got out of bed. I was just listening since I'm teaching, and... And I just knew today was going to be powerful. I knew this event was going to be powerful because of where we're at. Mm -hmm. Because we were in Pennsylvania, and it is the seat of a nation. It was prophesied. And I know God's going to do a lot with this state that's going to affect the rest of the United States. So, I mean, having it here, seeing and feeling his glory and, and just feeling his presence here and seeing how many people he's affecting, it affects you. It encourages you that no matter what you're going through, no matter what you see other people going through, God is really working to do and change so many people's lives. This is the revival. It yeah. is starting. But one of the things he, the Lord has told me several times over, this is just a drop in the bucket. We haven't seen anything yet. Oh, yeah. Mm -mm. You see, um, the Lord always likes to increase. You know, the situation is, are you ready for it? Yeah. Are you ready for that increase? Are you ready for that new wine? Yeah. Are you ready for that new wine skin? Are you ready? And I'm ready. Mm -hmm. And I like it. Because it's, it's different. This last 24 months, everything in our ministry has sh changed. Mm -hmm. Everything. The way we used to do ministry has changed. Every, you know, 
and, and I want to tell the saints again, remember, I'm from California, so any kind of restrictions that you see, we get it, we get it first, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I'm one of the pastors that said, I will not close. Yeah, amen. I'm one of the pastors amen. where they came with the sheriffs, and we didn't close. I'm one of those pastors where the sheriffs looked in the miracle, and, they, and the sheriff goes, we're not going to bother you anymore. <laughs> so, and I didn't know him. I didn't know that sheriff. I didn't know the three squad cars. That's, and I, I've never, ever, ever been put through a test like that. Mm -hmm. Everything shifted from that point. How is it your ministry is open and ours is shut down and they close ours down? How is it your ministry is open? I said, talk to the Lord. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, said, I said, did you bow down when the sheriff tried to come? And Yeah. I said, well, we didn't. Yeah. I was told that 40% of the church has never reopened in California. Is that true? It's still there right now. It's still there happening right now. When you have people that you never knew before in California that said, we found out your church was open because our church is closed and, and yeah. the pastor refused to open it. Mm -hmm. I said, well, what happened? I'm going to tell you what happened. And I, and I almost cried. He says, well, we went to our pastor's house. And it's still right now, oh, my God. We went to our pastor's house saying, what, where are we going to go? Where are we going to have church? I said, well, what did he do? We knocked, he knocked on the door. And, 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 and he opened the door, and he, he, the pastor told his own congregation to stay six foot from him. Wow. Wow. And from his, they went to the pastor's house. We need, we need direction. We need spiritual direction. And the pastor opened the door gently and says stay six foot away from me that's fear controlling him yep. when they mm -hmm. and i says like i didn't invite these people to my church they heard we heard your church was open yeah they we had standing room when the cold when that covid was at its high we had standing room mm -hmm. in our and and the lord's and i said lord this and i you know the the, the, the little part of me is like could this be a liability against me? <laughs> and, a Lord, and I heard his, his divine voice. He goes, as long as I'm bringing them and they come mm -hmm. every service, nobody will be affected. Yeah, amen. And we had people that would come with masks on. And then after about 30 or 40 minutes being in our service, they would take the mask off. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. And we, no one in our service caught anything for Praise 24 months. Doing that lockdown, no one. And that's the difference between religion yep. and God. Yep. And, God. and just inviting Him in, obeying Him, trusting in that's Him, right. being bold like a lion. That's, right. that's the difference. This is between what we're doing is God is separating us from the world, Come on. but He's also separating the religious. He's separating all the legalism, and he's separating his remnant for himself. Yeah. And that's the difference right now. You are seeing who is with God, who is bold to stand up, who is like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who refuse to bow down in the midst of all of that tyranny. They refused, and then Jesus showed up, and he was in the midst of them. And that's why we are seeing him in the midst of all of us is because we won't bow. We won't stop. We, won't, we will not Go with anything that they're doing. Amen. No, we're standing up for God's word and what God is saying, and that's why you're seeing God's move so much right now. And again, how hungry are the people? You were with me in Ohio for our first tent revival. Oh, yeah. We're going to do 49 more of those. And uh -huh. Dr. Stella pulled me aside, and what? she was so wow. felt led with her prayer. She was up there praying while we were out praying over people, and she says, we need to do more of these. We need to do more of these. Yes. We need to go deeper, deeper, deeper. Mm -hmm. So you're feeling it right now. Yeah. It's just people are so hungry to feel the Lord. They feel alone. They feel and alone. we're giving them hope. We're yeah. giving them the word of God, which is giving them truth, which is setting them free. That's why it's so important. No matter what all of us have been through yeah. in our own personal life, God is saying, no, I've set you here for such a time as this. Yeah. I need you to go be my hands and my feet. That's I need right. you to go be my voice because he needs. We are his voice in this world. We really are. And so that's why we have to have our voices be heard louder. Yeah. Well, we have a little bit of uh, half of His Glory Nations in mourning right now. We, we didn't do a Wednesday. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I hear Wednesday all the time. I know. We missed Wednesday, we too. We missed Wednesday. <laughs> yep. We'll, we'll be back on schedule again. And yeah. It, 
that, that's always fun. But there's a lot going on in the world, uh, the things that we've talked about. And uh-huh. God is moving. You can see it. You can feel it. It's, it's intense. I just talked to somebody that God actually had a prophetic word over. And I talked to him backstage. And he said, you have no idea the word you gave and what that meant. Some of that stuff I just got today. And you had mm. no idea. And, and he's like, how did you? I said, because God did. And that's what's so amazing, again, about God. Because no matter when he gives a prophetic word, I'm like going, okay, this person's going to think I'm crazy, but I'm just going to give it anyway. And then you see how God touched him with it. Yeah. That yes, I saw it. is almighty God. Yeah. I, I saw his, his, how his complexion just, just really, oh, my God, wrong time. And he's hungry for it. <laughs> so it was, if it's who I think it is. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you, know, I'll, I'll, you know, people will talk against California, and I was born and raised there, and I, and I want to take it, because it, it talks about what you just said. God used California to bring me where I am now. Mm-hmm. Because I was test. I was being really tested and tried in California. When you have, and I still love them, and they're still my friends, but when you have your pastor friends, I mean lots of them, telling them, telling you, Close your church. What you're doing yeah. is, I mean, did you, you, because people use me, look at me as a prophet, but I'm a pastor too. When you have people coming at you, texting you, calling you, telling you, you need to close your church. Why are you keeping it open? Uh, you know, this is happening. And I could hear the Holy Spirit saying, you either bow or yeah. stand. Yeah, amen. Amen. That's what we're saying now. Everyone standing. And this is the time to stand. Yes, sir. This is the season to stand. This is a season to keep standing. You see, you don't yeah. stand alone when you stand. Mm-hmm. You, you have to understand when, when the tree Hebrews were in the burning bush, they didn't they wasn't about himself. Nope. The Lord was standing with them. When you say, I choose to stand, you got all of heaven behind you. That's right. You got all of heaven behind you. You have the Holy Spirit, you have the Holy Ghost, and you got the men and women of God that are standing with you, whether you know them or not. Mm-hmm. And I saw the supernatural intervening the natural. Mm-hmm. I saw it with my own eyes. This, these pastors, who I love and my friends, and he says, they'll come to me. You stood when we didn't stand. Mm-hmm. We watched you. We thought that you were going to go down. We thought that they were going to get you. They are going to lock you up. They were going to shut your church. We thought that. We didn't think anything good that was going to happen with you. And we saw what happened to you. And then, next thing you know, you know, things happen. I get phone calls, and you guys know the rest. But it was just that, and I didn't, and I wasn't asking for all this. Nor was I seeking it. I just wanted to do God's will. And, and I, I want to tell you, it really, really, really makes a difference to make sure that you have the, route, the right spouse. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. everything that happened to me, I had to go to my wife and say, honey, we're going to keep the church open. <laughs> and I'm hoping and praying that she's going to go, yes. And everything God told me to do, I went to her and I said, we got to do this, honey. We got to do this now. We got to do this now. <laughs> and she would go, okay. Mm-hmm. And she yeah. was stood right there with the me. Mm-hmm. You know. And we need to stand right next to God. Just like your wife stood next to you, we got to stand next to God. We have to stand we next to, to God. One of the things he even gave me this morning was to give everybody out. This, is, this country is a gift to you. Mm. So take your nation back. Mm-hmm. He's giving it. We need to stand with God and say, okay, God's saying, take your nation back. We're just going to say just like Shiva mm-hmm. did you. Okay. Okay, God. Let's believe you. We're just going to do it. And no matter what it looks like, no matter how bad it seems, no matter how crazy it, 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 people may think we are, it doesn't matter because we're that three, the three Hebrew men. We're in that fiery furnace. Jesus is walking with us. We're not alone. And it's amazing because even though he gives us assignments, he gives us the ability to complete them. Mm-hmm. He gave you the ability to complete. He made your... What you're doing as a pastor, he made you look out different than everybody else. Because you know what? They choose to bow. And they also are not going to see that same gift that God is going to give to you because you did not not obey everybody else. 
Same thing God's doing to you. Same thing God's doing to everybody that chooses to obey him. And stand in the midst of all the people yelling and screaming at you, calling you all these names, and writing articles about you. Yeah, they, you they just like have to, to laugh. Even, yeah. <laughs> even people you don't think would attack you attack uh-huh. you. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I, I realize that. I'm, I, I look, I go, I, they trying to call me that? Yeah. You know, but you see, saints, I'll tell you something. When you, when you hear in your voice that something, you know, it was my beautiful wife. She spoke. And she tells you there are three squad cars, sheriffs, mm-hmm. in the parking lot of, your, of the church. And I'm in a meeting. I'm in the middle of preaching a message. <laughs> and I give my wife the mic. And I know. I, and, you know, it's, I'm like, Lord, if you're not in this. And the you know, associate pastors are with me. And I like telling the story because it just gives me that. And I want to encourage the people. Yeah. And I go out there and I see these. And they were out of their cars. They were outstanding. Standing, looking at me. And, and you know, I'm average height, but these guys were tall sheriffs. <laughs> and they... Especially like, when they're coming after you. And they're strong. <laughs> they're going, are you the pastor of this church? Are you the pastor of this church? Yes, I am. Are you aware? I mean, he's, are you aware that there's an epidemic going on? I go, I'm aware of it. The signs are on the, on the doors. And then, so you have your associate pastors, both of them, watching me handle this. Because, you know, we, I wasn't trained for this. This was all the Holy Spirit in me. Yeah. You're not trained for this. No. Mm-hmm. And he asked that last question. And is this, all these officers are looking at me. In their cars, in the siren. Are you going to close down now? And Dave and Julie, the natural man in me, I saw the handcuffs going on me. (laughs) I saw them putting me in the squad car. That was my, that was, you know, having all it. And this happened within a, a split of a second. And then I, I said, no, I will not close. Mm-hmm. But God bless you for that boldness. And he looked at me. Yes, he did. Mm-hmm. He looked at me. I go, here it comes. He goes, sir, I will not ever disturb you again. Mm-hmm. And we watched those squad cars leave and go to their next church. Which did not pass. Yeah. You didn't fear. And that's the difference. And we didn't fear. The fear is, so they try to intimidate you. They try to bring that distraction. They try to, try to deceive you into thinking that they had the power to do it. And you stood mm-hmm. your ground and said, no. And that's all it takes. When fear comes, all we have to do is say, no. We don't have to bow down to it. We don't have to subject ourselves. Just like what they're saying with all these, this, these laws, unjust laws. Yep. No. It's we the people. We the people. It's not you as the government. It's we the people. We know that we have more power. You are honestly appointed by us. Well, they aren't, but you know what I mean? It's supposed to be how the elections go right. in this country. Yeah. We're supposed to appoint people, not them appoint themselves. But, you know, that's cause how that's been. But what you're doing is more people need to stand up like that. More people need to stand up and say, you know what? No. This is not what we're going to do. The same thing with elections. The same thing. We cannot. We cannot say, okay, we're not going to vote because, well, it's look what happened last time. No. It's you keep going. You keep fighting that fight of faith. You keep standing up and believing and trusting That's in God right. that God is going to work it all out. God's going to work it out. How is he going to work it out, Julie? I don't know. God just says he's going to. And I don't care because, you know, just like the Red Sea, they didn't know what was going to happen, but it happened. That's right. We don't know exactly what's in front of us. We don't know what's in front of us. I just know that God is in front of us, and he's just going to go boop out of the way. That's right. He's going to move them out of the way yes. like they were never there. That's what, that's what encourages me every day. I'm just excited to see that Red Sea moment and what God's going to do. And, and, and the Red Sea moment is, is just one of the victories. He's not done yet. Mm-mm. No. Because when, when, when they left, something else happened. The Lord goes, sue the governor. <laughs> so... 25 plus of our pastors pastors got together because the governor filed a lawsuit against us mm-hmm. for those that would not close. He that says, all right, I'll, 
I'm going to make you close. And it was strong. And we filed a lawsuit against him. I mean it. And we, 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 we all felt led. And um, didn't last that long. Didn't last that long. God put a judge that feared the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. In California. Double amen. And I'm going to tell you what happened. Without using any names. The judge awarded us in California and told the governor of California, the governor, not mayor, the governor of California, the present governor of California, you cannot touch the church. I love hearing You that. cannot touch the church. And fined him a million and a half in wow. damages. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yep. So we have been thriving mm -hmm. in California. Those that are been standing on the Lord, like mm -hmm. you wouldn't believe. Mm -hmm. It pays to stand. It pays to pray. It does, it does. And I'm just saying that to encourage you. Mm -hmm. I'm, just, you know, and God's not done yet. He's not done yet. He's looking for the remnant that will say, I'm going to be bold in you, Lord. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. You know, the, the church has been comfortable, complacent, uh, corrupt, whatever you want to call it. I mean, we, just, we haven't been persecuted. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, if we have to do prison ministry, we do prison ministry. It was good yeah. enough for the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. And the disciples, why is why, why should we be any different? Yeah, and there's always been persecution, yep. but it's what you do with it. Yep. It's what you do with it that's going to determine your outcome. Are you going to be in that present cell, mm. or and then just you know just get your fate what they want you to have, or you can be like Paul and Silas. Yeah, and they prayed and they worshipped and they praised God so much that He caused an earthquake and set them all free. So that's the difference when, between one of us right now. It's are we going to be complacent? Are we just going to give in? Are we giving to fear? Are we going to give in to all these things? Are we going to say, you know what, God, no matter how life, my, my life just stinks right now, no matter how many horrible things are going on, I just want to love on you because you are worthy to be praised. Amen. Yep. That's the difference. Yep. And then you know what? When we praise him, and I, I'm telling you, I have praised I have walked into my prayer closet crying my heart out. And it just all, I've had so many attack after attack after attack. And then I, I went in that prayer closet. And I just started putting praise and worship on. And I would put on music that would just get me up. And one of my favorite songs right now is The Line of the Tribe of Judah. Yeah. I think I listened to it 100 times today. I'm not even kidding you. I listen to that song over and over and over again. But really, it is that Line of the Tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if we just knew that he was on in the inside mm -hmm. of us, then why would we ever back off? Why would we ever quit? We don't need to. They're the ones that have to quit. They're the ones that are going to have to back off because okay. they don't want, they don't have the perseverance like we had the perseverance yeah. because God gives it. Yeah, you know, Clay and I were talking about that when we went through all that those, those issues in New York, mm -hmm. what, what the governor or the AG was going to do. And we were talking and we were joking, well, what if they come after us? And, and we said, well, prison ministry. It's good enough for Paul. It's good enough for the disciples. Yeah. yeah. You know what? We'll um, have fun in prison. Arthur Pulowski. Yep. I had a couple of prophetic words on him, and his wife gave it to him every day, especially when he was in seclusion. He got to come out, I think, for an hour a day, and she'd read him the prophetic words. Mm. And I talked to him in Oregon mm -hmm. on the phone. I actually talked to him again on my way home from Minnesota when I was preaching there. And um, not only did he got to get him out of prison, but w one of the prophetic words he gave me was that he was going to be the light inside of that prison, and he was going to bring proof of Christ. And people were going to look to him and seek after him because of what was on him. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. It was exactly, revival broke out. He, No matter how much they tried to break him, they could not break him. And now, all of a sudden, he's running for some part of his government. And I don't remember exactly what, you know, what, he, what he's running for. But I was like, you are that Joseph. Mm -hmm. I remember saying, you are that Joseph. You're going to go from the prison cell, and you're going to go into leadership. And he called me. He said, I'm going to run. And I said, well, that's what God said. And it was just awesome to see because he literally was in the darkest, darkest of it. He was in isolation for yep. like 52 <clears throat> or 53 days. That could have broken anybody. But again, he stood and he fought and he held on to the word of God as much as he possibly could hold on to it to keep him to stay up. And then his, that perseverance but what he did how many times he was persecuted how many times he was arrested how many times he was made in you know and uh, made an example of in yep. canada mm -hmm. they made an example of him and people loved him mm -hmm. 
because he stood up and he fought. So even though sometimes it feels like we're all alone, oh, no, we're never alone. No. God is there. God is there. It's awesome. You know, the, the, and you would think, well, why am I here? Or why am I there? Or why did this happen? Or why did the mm-hmm. Lord allow this? Or this? Saint, you have to understand when there is a promise, there's yeah. a purpose. Mm-hmm. There's a purpose always. You know, here I am. My, many people know my wife is from Iran. And there was a prophecy given eight months ago that there's going to be a, sh- a major shaking in, in Iran. And I didn't realize that I, I was going to be in the midst of it. And, and I said, you know what? My wife is from Iran. And this big shaking is happening right now mm-hmm. in Iran. And so there's a lot of demonstrations because there's a lot of Iranians in California. And I'm saying, so my wife's going to these dem- demonstrations because she's Iranian. And so everybody knows I have a motorcycle. So uh, I said, oh, okay, let's go to the demonstration, honey. And so I'm on my motorcycle. My wife's on my bike. You know. And then so you see, and then all of a sudden they, they, they see my wife. They say, oh, she's Iranian. And they see me. And we're all, we are a biker's outfit on. <laughs> and, and so I don't know if you've been watching what's been happening, but uh, at some of those uh, gatherings, you know, they look at me mm-hmm. and they pull me up I'm on, on the stage. You know, and, you know, it's like, wait a minute. You know, I, you know, I wasn't really, you know, not, not so much prepared for that. And I'm, you know, releasing the gospel to hundreds and hundreds of Iranians. Yeah. Praise you know? the Lord. And it's just that. Uh, so God used these little pot situations to, it's like when this situation is for regime change, and, and God said, I want you to speak for a heart change. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying this is because God will give you opportunities in uncomfortable situations. You just mentioned about what happened to Paul and Silas mm-hmm. in jail. Yeah. Within 24 hours, yeah. Paul and Silas went from a street ministry to a prison ministry, to a house ministry. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. <laughs> All because they said yes, Lord. Yeah. So what will happen if you say yes? That's right. God you can know? use anybody who's willing and obedient. That's the key, willing and obedient. Yeah. Day, and three, yes. three, four years from now, where were you? Uh, I was in a cave. Okay. Studying. Studying. Yeah, in the wilderness. I was in a wilderness. In the cave. wilderness. Yeah. And, and look, how, look what has happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Julie, where were you a few years back? I was a hot mess. <laughs> I'll just be honest. I mean, I was preaching the word of God, but I literally was. There were so many things that were going wrong in my life. You know, I was a mess. And God told me to get on YouTube, and I was like, uh, no. <laughs> you know, you need to find somebody else for that because I am not cut out to be in front of the camera. <laughs> yeah, now he has me in front of the camera. So it really is. He just shows you it's not your ability. It's not your strength. It's I just need you to do what I've asked you to do, and yeah. I will give you the ability to do it. I just need your willingness. He's given us the ability. He just needs our willingness because, honestly, we are not robots. We cannot change our will. But if we would just be willing to obey him, oh, the sky's the limit. And I'm telling you, since the time that he prayed for me, it was a year ago in October, we were in Oklahoma City. I remember. <laughs> he prayed for me, and he's just like, increase our ministry, Lord. Increase our ministry. And I'm telling you, it's increased <laughs> a lot. <laughs> the and, Spirit of God fell on you like, bang. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Julie was there to help us. <laughs> and we couldn't get her off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, several times. You know, See, that's yeah. what servants do. They clean the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and you could see the power of God was just on her. Yeah. yeah. The power of God was just on her. Mm-hmm. And and so when I see how the Lord has just expanded the territory of ministry for you, it's just it's a blessing. Yeah. It is a blessing to, to see that. And Saint, you have no idea what you could do for somebody. That's if right. you just say, Lord, I am willing. Mm-hmm. I am willing. You're looking at a person who, you're looking at a person that didn't want anything. I want everything to do with God. I want to make that clear. But I didn't want anything to do with ministry. And people will come to prophesy to me. You're going to preach. I said, I will not. <laughs> you've been called to preach. I said, I've been not. You got, you, you missed it. Because I was very, 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 if I told you that everything was, I was happy in my career. I want, I was, I was, I loved it. I did everything, you know, I went to school for the medical field. I went to school, I went, 
you know, I wanted, and, and things were happening in a good way in the medical field. And, and, and that the, the prophecy to tell me that I'm going to leave and, and I'm going to preach, I said, that just destroyed my whole day. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I tried my best to convince God this was the first mistake he made. Don't we all try to convince yeah. him that he made a mistake? I, I said, Lord, I will go every Sunday. I will pay my tithe. But I don't want to get up there. And I said, you want me to be a catcher? I'll be a catcher. <laughs> uh, but you know my bone, my bone frame, so I'll have a chair next to me. <laughs> and I, I said, this one thing happened that made me change everything. Two years, I said no to God. Don't ever do that, saints, please. No. Don't ever do that. I, I said no to God for two years. And then one day I'm, in, I'm praying, I'm on my knees, and he brought it up again. I want you to shepherd my sheep. I said, Lord, we've been there. He says, okay, you can walk away. And my spirit man said, yes. He said, but I'm going to show you what will happen if you walk away. I saw the most scariest thing I've, I, uh, to this day, it still bothers me. And I still ask God to forgive me for being so self-centered, because that's what it was. When I saw uh, hands, all of a sudden, my wall, the wall is disappeared, and I saw those hands come to the wall. I saw hands come to the wall. They were small, and then they became as big as humans. And when those hands came to the wall and they became big, and all of a sudden I saw drip, drops of blood coming from those big, huge hands. Uh -huh. And I saw thousands of souls saying, save me, save me, save me, get me out of this place. I'm burning up, I'm burning up. Eerie sounds coming, thousands. Uh -huh. And the Lord, then the voice of the Lord came. I didn't see the Lord, I heard his voice. You can walk away, but the second you walk away, every one of these souls will be on your hands. Wow. Wow. I dropped everything. I go, I, you know, I dropped to the floor. I cried out. I said, Lord, forgive me. I, I didn't realize the seriousness of this. Mm -hmm. Wow. You, I've, you've helped many people in their physical state in the medical field. Now I need you to help them in their spiritual. Yeah. And I never looked back since then. Praise the Lord. I've never looked back. And don't you look back. That's okay. right. Don't you look back. Mm -hmm. I've never looked back. Dave, did you run too? <laughs> did I what? Did you run too? Oh, I tried to run. Did you? <clears throat> yeah. I think all of us did. Yeah. So what's your story? <clears throat> well, we're into being you. I died. So I, I died and went to heaven and then I still ran. And wow. You ran after that? You yeah, did. I ran after that. Yeah. Oh. I died three times and I still ran. And I said, I'm not going to be a, I'm not going to get a ministry. I tried to go back into the corporate world, and he slowed me down and says, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> and then I finally gave in. Dave did the, the, the Lord has a way of making things uncomfortable. Oh, very uncomfortable. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, things got really uncomfortable at, at the medical center at the hospital. And I knew that there was a warfare yeah. mm -hmm. going on. And when the Lord tells you, Stop wasting their time. Leave. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I left. And I told my wife, I, and I thought my, I said, Lord, if I tell my wife, I just, I left. I just, it, you know, what's she going to say? Yeah. We have a mortgage. <laughs> we have all this, we got this and all that. She's going to call. She's going to, she's not going to go there. So I get on the phone. I said, honey, guess what? She didn't expect that phone call. Uh, I'm not at the medical center anymore. And she goes, you know, I was praying for that to happen. Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> See, you never know. I go, what? He says, I, I, I knew God had something else for you. He sa I said, wait a minute. You never told me that. I thought you loved where, what I do for a living. He says, no, I got tired of all the... Coming home smelling like the hospital, and the, I'm gonna leave it alone. But just <laughs> things, I'll leave it alone. But it's just that she says, I, I said, well, he gotta do something else, Lord. I know you have something else better for him to do. You know, the scrubs and all that, and you have to do it. It's just, 
and she was delighted. You know, you still are in the medical field. It's just in a different way. Exactly. You're different still way. in the healing ministry, and you know what? Yes. You don't have to give people side effects to di- different medications. You just lay hands on them, and you heal. And them they fall down. God and they fall down. So you are still in healing. You're just in healing true. in a different way. So you are still in the medical field, but you're just doing it the way God wants you to do it. And I'm going to tell you something else. What happened? The Lord opened my eyes because I was part of the pharmaceutical. I was mm. part of it. I, and my, my wife would tell me things. I'd go, no, nah, it's not true. I've been working. Uh, that's not true. And when I left that field, when I left that field, God, my, he opened my eyes, and I saw yeah. corruption. Yeah. Yeah. And, a lot of and corruption. I had to repent. I said, I was part of that for all these years. I was part of it. Mm-hmm. And I go, Lord. And so people said, you know, you're not there anymore. I said, he delivered me from it. Amen. Amen. He's waking up everybody right now because mm-hmm. we're all seeing what was going on with it. We all thought it was good. We thought, you know, and now we're seeing how much of a lie it's really been. Okay. Mm. Really. All right. Uh, you guys want to say anything in closing to this glory family? Sure. Yes. Go ahead, Julie. I just want to say you cannot ever give up. And, you know, there's a lot of us that have been in that state where mm. we have been in that darkness. We've been in that hole. We've been in that where there was no light. And God is that light. And he's giving you that light because he's giving you this encouragement right now that he has your back, that nothing is, anything that you're facing is bigger than God. Nothing that you're facing is bigger than God. God is bigger than anything that you see today. And God is saying, you win. And all he needs is you trusting and believing in his ability. He's wrapping his arms around you and saying, don't worry. Keep your head up. Keep moving forward because you are on, going to be on the winning side. So don't ever, ever, ever stop and give up on God. Now, real quick, I want you to look at me. And I want you to, I want you to look at me. Let me tell you something. You don't know that your eyes and your ears have not seen or heard the things that God has for those mm-hmm. that love him. Mm-hmm. Amen. And those that follow him. The best is yet to come. Amen. Amen. On, for all of us. Amen. These are glory days. I'm going to say it again. These are glory days. Mm -hmm. Not for the wicked, but for the righteous. So get ready. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory days for his glory. That's all we do it for is his glory. God bless you. We'll be right back afterwards.